In this video we talk about vegetable protein versus animal protein for muscle growth and for health. So one of the most common myths in this debate is that vegetable protein is an incomplete protein. It doesn't have all the amino acids that we need and that's actually not true. Virtually every single food has a complete amino acid profile, every single food other than gelatin that is missing one amino acid. So consuming protein from vegetable sources throughout the day from different vegetable sources will give you all the amino acids that we need for muscle growth and for health, as long as you're not starving yourself, of course. There's also no need to combine vegetable proteins, that's another myth, because our body will do that on its own. In spite of that, some vegetable proteins have a lower amino acid ratio than some animal proteins. But does that affect muscle growth? Apparently not. As long as the protein levels are still high, as long as you're consuming enough protein, it will not affect muscle growth. This study shows that a rice protein supplement has the exact same effect on muscle building and strength as a milk protein. This other study also shows the same with pea protein. Protein is the only macronutrient that contains nitrogen. So nitrogen balance is often used to measure the levels of protein in our body. There's three stages of nitrogen balance. The positive one, that is the best to build muscle, the equilibrated one and the negative one, that is the worst to build muscle. So nitrogen balance is one of the most important things when it comes to muscle building and probably the most important one. And studies show that vegetable protein is actually equivalent to animal protein when it comes to nitrogen balance. Therefore, it's equivalent when it comes to muscle growth. But what about the bioavailability of proteins? The biological value of a protein? The proteins with the highest bioavailability of them all is milk, casein, egg whites and soy isolate protein. Although lentils only have a 0.52 to bioavailability, that meaning that your body should only absorb half of the protein of lentils, the nitrogen balance stays exactly the same with the lentils or with an animal protein. So although the bioavailability is less, the nitrogen balance is actually the same. So it does not affect muscle growth whatsoever. Other than that, this study also shown that the protein levels on vegans' blood is actually higher than the protein levels of non-vegans. So if everything is the same, if we can get the amino acids from vegetable protein, from animal protein, if the nitrogen balance is actually the same, why should you only consume vegetable protein? Well, when it comes to foods, you cannot look at them as an isolated nutrient. Foods are actually a package, they come in a package. And when you eat animal protein, you're actually eating a lot of other stuff, like saturated fat, cholesterol, and a lot of other things that we are going to look into now. So, the levels of C-reactive protein are a great and traditional measure of inflammation in our bodies. When there's inflammation in our bodies, our liver stops producing regular protein and starts to produce inflammation-specific proteins. That being, it takes away the protein from muscle repair and muscle growth to fight the inflammation. And the level of inflammation is way higher in meat eaters than 100% plant-based populations. So your body is actually taking away the protein to fight the inflammation instead of using it to build more muscle. Another important factor when it comes to health and muscle development is actually the acidification of our body. Some foods make our body acid and some foods make our body alkaline. And alkaline being the perfect state for our body to be in. We already know that animal protein is very very acid for our bodies while vegetables make our bodies more alkaline. So the perfect alkaline state for health and muscle development is actually achieved on a 100% plant-based diet. Another very important factor when it comes to muscle building and health is the cortisol levels. Cortisol is commonly known as the stress hormone. We want to keep it down as much as possible for muscle building and for our health. And what we eat actually influences the cortisol levels. So high protein diets, especially animal protein rich diets, cause a huge increase in cortisol levels when compared to a plant based diet. Which is not good for muscle building, for weight loss, for health, for nothing. So you want to keep the cortisol levels as low as possible. We also need to talk about polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. They are usually found in exhaust from cars, tobacco and grilled 
myths and they are actually obese genes that being they are like genes that promote obesity in our bodies so for non-smokers 99% of these chemicals come into our bodies from food and that is mainly from grilled meats these chemicals are so powerful that the exposure of a baby in his mother's uterus can actually affect his obesity levels later down the line we also need to look at the cholesterol in both proteins, in animal proteins and in vegetable proteins. And in here there is no discussion at all because animal proteins are the only source of cholesterol in our diets. This study compared the levels of cholesterol in vegans, ovalecto vegetarians, people who eat eggs and milk, and meat eaters, and it shows that the vegan population has 15 to 25 less cholesterol than the other populations. This other study also found that a plant-based intervention to reduce cholesterol levels actually decreased the levels of cholesterol by 35% in only 4 weeks. 35% in only 4 weeks. This is super important because cholesterol is the most important and maybe the only factor when it comes to arteriosclerosis that is the building up of plaque in our hearts. So another thing that we need to look into is the growth hormone and cancer promoting IGF-1 insulin like growth factor 1. We already know that the lowest levels of IGF-1 are found in 100% plant-based populations and because of that the blood of a vegan is actually 8 times more powerful when it comes to fighting cancer. That means that diets rich in animal protein are actually cancer promoting while diets rich in vegetable proteins are actually cancer fighting. Throughout our lives we will have some cancer cells in our blood. We will have some cancer cells in our body. The question is, does it progress or does it not? And one of the most important factors when it comes to cancer growing is actually the animal protein we consume. This means that people in a 100% plant-based diet have the lowest incidence of cancer amongst all. The levels of IGF-1 are not only important when it comes to cancer fighting and cancer promoting but are also a great indicative of longevity, the years we live. And that brings us to our last topic and that is the amino acid leucine which is found mainly in meat and animal proteins. And although this seems good for muscle growth, it seems really, really bad for our longevity and the years that we live. The amino acid leucine is the strongest amino acid when it comes to mTOR activation. mTOR is an important measure for cell growth, metabolism and it's one of the most crucial levels for our aging. So it appears that reducing the consumption of leucine and uh, thereby reducing the consumption of animal proteins is actually great for improving our years, to add years to our lives. And that's it for the video guys, I did not make any of these apps, everything will be in the links on the description, so check them out, let me know what you think of this video, let me know if it was informative, because it took a long time to make, a lot of research, if you thought it was informative, please drop a like down below to support the channel, to help it reach more people, because I feel like these videos need to reach way more people than, than what they reach, because my channel is not that big, but these videos should reach millions of people, so drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already also drop a comment to help this video rank better and tell me which topic should I discuss next I already did a similar video on soy and on gluten so this is my third one of the kind so if you are enjoying these videos drop a like also share this video to help spread the message with your friends with your family with everyone that is looking into muscle building and animal protein everyone that believes the myths about vegetable protein so we can set this straight and I'm gonna see you all in the next one